Hey everybody, this is Robert Mathis from the Quest for Groove, and this video is about standalone groove boxes, like for example that newly announced Machine Plus, and also about the future of mobile finger drumming in general. So if you're interested, stick around. The Quest for Groove. So I noticed a couple of people on YouTube already got their hands on a working version of the Machine Plus. So in case you just want to see somebody use the Machine Plus and make some beats with it, then this is probably not the video for you because this video is mainly about yeah, it's me bitching about the uh, Machine Plus and what it cannot do, mainly. And uh, it's it's one of the reasons that I still haven't switched to a standalone unit, because it seems like a dream, right? To be more mobile, to not need your computer. It's what I want, too. It's what everybody wants. But I cannot switch uh, right now, because the Akai MPC Live didn't do it, the Akai MPC One couldn't do it, and now the Machine Plus cannot do it. Basically, what they cannot do is run a drum plugin, a drum simulator plugin. And if they could, then that would change the game, but they can't. So um, let me just explain what a drum simulator plugin is and what the difference is between a drum simulator and a normal sampler. So a sampler or a groove box, which is what the Machine Plus is or the, what the Akai MPC Live and Akai MPC One are, uh, what they do is basically they're a box, you load a bunch of sounds in there, you assign those sounds to pads, and then when you hit a pad, you'll hear the sound that you assigned to the pad. It's, it's as simple as that, right? And if you hit the pad softly, then uh, the sampler will play that sample softly, and if you hit it loudly, it will crank up the volume of the sample and you'll hear it loudly. Now, a Drum Simulator does things quite differently, actually. It analyzes the MIDI data, so it looks at incoming MIDI data, it notices, hey, uh, Rob just hit the snare pad and he hit it softly. In that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a sample, an actual recording of a drummer softly hitting a snare. And then when Rob hits that same pad, but he hits it loudly, oh, I'm going to take another sample out of another drawer of that same drummer hitting the snare loudly. Actually, a loud hit on a snare, a recording of a loud hit. And, and then there's a multiple stages in between, right? A medium hit, medium loud hit. And then on top of that, if I hit uh, a, the same snare pad twice in a row, twice loudly, the drum software actually has this drawer with a couple of loud samples of, the, of that drummer hitting the snare loudly. And it will actually sort of randomize those samples because in real life, when you're actually recording a drummer, no two snare hits sound exactly the same. That's just not how physics works. So it has a bunch of those snare samples and then it round robins those uh, samples into uh, creating this illusion that the drums that you're hearing are actually played live. And that's a very, very big difference from what you hear when you would, for example, just sample an acoustic drum kit and load those samples into a groove box. The groove box or the sampler just has one sound and it just adjusts the volume where a drum simulator actually simulates the actual playing of a real drummer by using multiple velocity layers and also using that round robin uh, random sampling thing. So uh, that's a common mistake that I hear a lot of people make who think that they can just uh, load acoustic sounding samples in their groove box and then they have an acoustic kit. That's not how it works. Uh, that realism, that's gone if you, if you do it that way. Now objectively, there's nothing wrong with your beats not sounding real, right? That's a bullshit comparison. That's apples to oranges. If you like to make sampled music, then it, your sampled music will sound that way. But if that's your art, that's your artistic choice, then that's great. It's, there's nothing wrong with samples. The thing is, I usually need realistic sounding drums. And if I would ever, uh, you know, start to play live, then I would very much like to be able to play real drums on stage without having to bring my laptop. So that's why I am still hoping for native instruments to, for example, update the firmware of the Machine Plus unit and uh, allow me to load something like uh, Native Instruments Abbey Road drum kits in there or something. I mean, that's still a Native Instruments product. You know, I'll stay within the ecosystem, but if that would be possible, that would already be a very, very big game changer for me and people like me who like to play real drums on their pad controllers. Um, with that said, I would like to move on to the future because I think mobility and all that type of stuff is actually around the corner a little bit. And um, I just want to quickly touch on that subject for all of you who are feeling hopeless right now after seeing this and, you know, you, you want to ditch your laptop, but you can't. Uh, well, I think uh, hope uh, is definitely warranted because uh, Apple actually switched 
to or, or is going to switch to their own custom CPUs inside their computers. And that's also relevant for PC users. Why? Well, what Apple is basically going to do, and this is an oversimplification, but just to keep it short, Apple's basically going to put beefed up iPad and iPhone chips inside their laptops and desktop computers if they ever make more of those. So what that means is that uh, software developed for any Apple computer, any Apple laptop is going to be written for those iPad, iPhone chips. So what that means is that as soon as software developers fix their software to work with their MacBooks, which they're definitely going to do because there's a lot of musicians using MacBooks for music production, right? If Addictive Drums or Superior Drummer fixes their VST plugin to work with the new MacBooks that have iPad chips in there, then that means that an iPad could technically run that software as well. It's not actually as simple as that, but you know, the gap is narrowing. The gap between a phone or an iPad and a computer is basically at that point in the Apple ecosystem not that big anymore. And that's going to be a very, very interesting time because maybe you cannot have uh, a machine groove box, but if you can hook up your phone to a MIDI controller and have addictive drums installed on your phone or have superior drummer installed on your phone, yeah, then you're getting pretty close to a very, very nice mobile unit. And uh, Apple is actually working on the first Apple Silicon machines and uh, they say the transition will take uh, two years or something like that. So that means that more mobility seems to be around the corner. And here's another video you might like. I am going to be back soon with some more information about finger drumming and drumming and grooving in general, as I always do on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this. Hit like and subscribe if you did and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.